Let's take a look at the facilities portal for end users, which includes a new dashboard, which can be the sole landing page of the portal, or you can link to this page from your main landing page if you want to integrate the facilities management system portal into your existing ShareWell customer portal. Once you access the Facilities Management Service page, you will have access to five frequently requested services or quick ticket buttons. Out of the box, the quick ticket buttons include the most common facilities requests for ShareWell's client base. Replace lighting, report a plumbing issue, temperature control, card access, and parking issues. These buttons can be customized to better suit your company's needs. If the user does not find what they are looking for in the quick ticket buttons, they can access the complete facilities service catalog by either clicking the Browse All Services link or selecting the service catalog from the menu bar. Another feature of the Facilities MAP is the multi-tenant discussion board, which allows you to display only facilities-related announcements on the facilities landing page. If you click on any one of the five quick ticket buttons, a new work order for that issue will open and allow you to enter the details for, of your issue and submit the work order. In this case, we have the HVAC repair, which is a very simple reporting form. It asks for a description of your issue and requires you to enter a building code, which is one of the new business objects added for this MAP. Users can either type in the correct code or use the related item picker to select a building code from the building table. In this case, we will select our headquarters. Once you have entered all of your information for this work order, go ahead and click the Submit button, which will display the view-only version of the form. In this view, you can see the status of the work order, add comments, or edit and resubmit. The next section of this video will cover the Facility Service Catalog. This is a tab-based four-level service catalog. It includes the main service of facilities, four out-of-the-box categories of construction services, ground maintenance, facilities management, and records management. You can add or change these categories to meet your specific needs. As you click on each tab, the subcategories and work order types will be displayed for the respective category. Simply click on the work order type links to create a new work order that is pre-filled with the categorization, team assignment, and priority. The facilities portal includes the My Items dashboard which will display all items the user has submitted for IT incidents, facilities work orders, human resource cases, and projects. The grid view shows the status and assignment for each item, and if you double click on any item, it will open the view only form of that item. If you need to edit the work order, click on edit, make your changes, and submit again to update the work order. One of the roles for facilities management is that of facilities dispatcher. The function of the facilities dispatcher is to review each new work order, validate they have sufficient information to proceed, and assign the work order to the correct team or technician. Once work orders are completed, the dispatcher's role includes reviewing the work order, processing required billing, and generating time and cost reports as required by the business. The MAP includes a dashboard for the facilities dispatcher, which displays an active work by team cone chart and search results widgets for completed work orders and unassigned work orders, which are the main concern of the facilities dispatcher. To review a work order, simply double click on the work order record from the search results widget and the default view of the work order form will be displayed. In this view, you can assign the work order to the correct person or team. Set the priority and interact with the requester if the work order needs clarification or more information. Once the work order is reviewed, you can set the proposed start date and target completion date. Save the work order and it will now be visible to the team or technician that it has been assigned to for completion. There are several tabs that are visible on the default work order form. They include the journals, related work orders for recurring scheduled maintenance, proposals from vendors or third-party contractors for items required to fulfill the work order. To create a proposal, click on the New Proposal button and fill in the proposal fields, then save the work order.
The Facilities Building tab shows all of the details for the related building. You can open the building form to view the contracts, suppliers, work orders, and configuration items that are related to that building. Configuration items can be ITCIs or facility CIs like HVAC or electrical. Now we will review the team manager role for facilities management. The facilities MAP provides two dashboards targeted for the team manager role. The facilities team manager dashboard includes buttons to create a new work order and view all work orders in the queue, as well as a date range filter for the widgets on the dashboard. The widgets include the count of unassigned work orders for your team, which you can drill down and see the list of work orders that are currently unassigned. There is also a workload by team member chart and a team tickets by subcategory cone chart. There are two search results sections, one for my team's open work orders and one for my team's recurring work orders, which we will detail later in this video. Another critical dashboard in the MAP is the Facilities Management Oversight Dashboard. This dashboard has a link to view projects associated with facilities. There are count widgets for work orders requested by VIPs, total work orders, and unowned work orders. There are also bar charts for work orders by category, work orders by building and category, and team workload. You can drill down to the work order list by double clicking on any of the widgets on the dashboard. The last dashboard we will review is the Facilities Technician Dashboard, which shows search results of my work order tickets, my team's open work orders, and my team's recurring scheduled maintenance, along with the count of unassigned work orders and unread email journals for any work order assigned to the user. The dashboard also includes a button to create a new work order for walk-up and phone requests. And we're going to use this button to create a new work order so we can demonstrate the next feature of the Facilities MAP, which is the ability to schedule recurring maintenance work orders. One of the most common processes in facilities management is scheduled recurring maintenance. The Facilities MAP provides features to schedule recurring work orders and view the schedule on the facilities calendar. Creating a recurring work order for the scheduled maintenance is very simple. Begin by either creating a new work order or editing an existing open work order. Regardless of the category selected, set the subcategory to recurring maintenance. You will then see a checkbox to schedule recurring future work orders. Check the box and a new box will appear with fields to set the scheduled frequency, start date of the schedule, and number of recurring work orders to create. Once you save the work order, an automated process will run to create the recurring work orders and link them to the current work order. They can then be viewed in the Work Orders tab and on the Facilities Team Manager dashboard under My Team's Recurring Work Orders. Note that the out-of-the-box filter on this search grid results is to show scheduled work orders for only the next 10 business days, but this can be adjusted to meet your needs. Each work order has links in the I want to section of the side panel to track time and track cost. Simply click the link to track time, enter a description of what was done, and then enter the amount of hours to add that to the work order. Each link is a cumulative process so you can add more time or costs as the work order progresses.